All right, day two of our virtual horse week, and I have a good one for you today. Today, we're gonna be learning about forage and your horse. What's going on, everyone? Thank you for joining me for day two of our virtual horse week. Uh, for today, we are going to learn about forage, whether you should feed bad forage or uh, just regular bales of hay, or what are we going to do this winter because uh, the weather's been so rough. What are you going to do if it ends up being a shortage of hay? So with us today, I have Melinda from Triple Crown. How you doing, Melinda? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate you joining us for this week. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Forage is such an important topic, so I'm glad that you guys are covering it. It is. It's very important. So why don't you start off and tell us a little bit about yourself? So I actually grew up on um, a farm. My dad did uh, Timothy, grass hay, alfalfa hay, as well as other cash crops. Um, grew up in the, doing the 4-H program. Um, then I went to Penn State and I majored in animal science with an equine science minor. I then became a feed rep in 2005. <laughs> and here we are, 2021. I'm still doing it. Um, I'm obviously with Triple Crown. I live in the Hudson Valley of New York and I have um, two horses currently. I have a 28 year old Dutch Warm Blood and a 13 year old um, Quarter Horse Cross Pony. This for my kids, but I also occasionally ride it. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about Triple Crown as well? So Triple Crown is um, a privately owned company. We've been around just over 25 years now. Um, we really kind of focus on the super premium feeds and we only do horse feeds. So we don't do any other species. We're horse only. Um, although, as I'm going to be talking about forages today, I'm also going to obviously talk about our forages, which are fed to a lot of zoo animals also, which is also fun when we get the emails that, um, you know, elephants eating our grass forage or, um, <laughs> you know, some of these exotics. So that's fun. But we do focus on, um, on mainly equine. Do you have any pictures of that? That'd be kind of cool to see. I will send them over. I have some somewhere on my oh. laptop. Um, I'll send them over. Yeah, it's fun to hear those stories because although I love horses, obviously, um, it's nice to have something else in the mix every so often. <laughs> yeah, so obviously hay is a hot topic, especially this time, this year. Uh, last year was rough, but even this year is getting worse. Uh, the weather has just been, you know, it's been so bad and we haven't even gotten second cut here at the store yet. And I know other places have been having trouble even getting first cut. So... I'm very excited about this topic, uh, and I'm just going to let you take it over. Sure. So I want to say, because I did grow up on a farm, I do appreciate our hay farmers. And it is, if you've never um, had a cut hay or bale hay or stack hay, it's a <laughs> thankless job. It's yeah. awful. It's literally <laughs> awful. Um, and it's very frustrating. I know my dad would just constantly watch the weather reports. <laughs> Because obviously, once you cut it, you don't want it to get rained on. And it's just, you know, sometimes luck is not on your side. Yep. So it is a very hard job. Um, and I don't think a lot of I, I, a lot of horse owners appreciate just um, just how difficult it is to um, grow hay. So I just want to say that, that I thank all the farmers out there who do it. And um, if you've never gotten a chance to experience it, Go ask your farmer if he's not a middleman. Um, ask the farmer exactly what the process is because it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, that's it, for it's sure. Not easy. Yeah, that's for sure. I've done I've done my fair share of getting the hay out of the fields and stuff like that. It's not it's not an easy job for sure. It's not, and then of course, generally you do it in the middle of summer when it's a hundred yeah. degrees. <laughs> yeah. And the hay sticks to you, and yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So you have a PowerPoint for us. I do. So I'll start here. Right. Okay, are you able to see that, Kevin? Yep, yep, it looks good. 
Okay. All right. So we'll begin. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. I will stop uh, every so often and just see if there are some questions. Um, but I'm going to roll through the first couple of slides and just kind of go from there. Um, I know sometimes people think it's an odd thing for a feed rep to be talking about forages. Um, but the reality is next to water, forage is the most important part of our horse's diet. Um, it's often overlooked, but it is the bulk of their diet or should be the bulk of their diet, which I work with a lot of ho horse owners and barns. And oftentimes I come across situations where forage is not the bulk of the diet. And it really should be unless there is a special circumstance, which obviously do occur. We can talk about that in a little bit, but this should really be the bulk of your horse's diet. So when I come to your farm and I'm working with you doing a plan, the first thing I'm going to ask is how much hay are you feeding? The horse should be consuming one and a half to two percent of their body weight in hay or, or you know, pasture, grass and hay, depending on the time of year. So a thousand pound horse should be eating 15 to 20 pounds per day of forage. Um, I can't tell you how often I come across either um, horse owners that aren't feeding enough forage or they have no idea how much they're feeding. If you tell me your horse gets two flakes in the morning and two flakes at night, that really doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Um, I know Kevin and I were talking beforehand. Every bale weighs a different amount. Um, it depends, each flake weighs a different amount. It depends on the tension of the baling twine when the farmer's baling it. And, you know, it can even vary from field to field with the same farmer, depending on their machinery. So I encourage you to go out and weigh your hay. Um, you know, if you're a person who generally gives two flakes in the morning, put two flakes in and weigh it. It doesn't have to be fancy. I put a picture here of someone who's obviously using laundry baskets and they have their scale. Um, you can go buy a scale. I, I believe Tractor Supply has them. You can even get a bathroom scale would work. Really anything is better than nothing. Um, you know, go ahead, put the basket on, tear out the scale and then put your hay in. If you can weigh your hay every single day, that's ideal. I realize we don't live in an ideal world, um, but even if every so often you can weigh it so you have a baseline of um, how much you're giving your horse. Because again, this is, if people would feed better quality forage and more forage, honestly, it would solve a lot of the problems out there. Um, so how do you know if your hay is good? First and foremost, like, does your horse eat it? Because you could have the best quality hay. If your horse doesn't eat it, it doesn't matter. And that goes for feed also. Um, if your horse won't eat the feed, it's doing them no good. Now, um, obviously, some hay is just generally more palatable. Um, hays that are stemmier, most horses don't prefer. They prefer a softer hay, which generally is also a better quality hay. Um, we also may look into why they're not eating hay or their, their grain for that matter, either one because there could be an issue with ulcers, um, there could be hindgut inflammation, there could be leaky gut. So if it's a once off that your horse isn't eating it, let's just try some different hay. If it's a consistent problem, we're going to need to involve your vet and see exactly why they aren't consuming the hay. Um, again, I also touched on texture. Uh, if you can ball up the hay in your hand, that's great. If it is jabbing you and it's very stemmy and hard and pokey, um, not ideal. The color, I don't put a ton of emphasis on color, but color is important. Um, if your hay has gotten sun bleached a little bit, that's not gonna super concern me. Um, but again, obviously we want, we want green hay, that's ideal. Free of mold, especially this year, um, as Kevin was saying, I'm in the Hudson Valley of New York. Our first cut, I have been able to test some. It came out really good. The second cut that's out there, people are complaining of mold. Um, obviously, this is going to cause a lot of health issues, um, as well as it can cause barn, barn fires. So if you notice um, moldy hay, um, it tends to be very dusty. It'll have an odor to it. If you aren't sure, 
you know, ask your vet, your farrier, someone else in your barn to check out your hay and see if there's mold. You want to just discard of it. You want to compost it. You want to throw it out. You really want it out of your barn ASAP. So free of mold and also free of weeds. And I'm sure um, a lot of people are loosely familiar. There are certain weeds that are um, obviously going to cause uh, health issues in our horses also. So these are things that I'm looking for when I'm purchasing hay or if I'm at a farm and looking at the hay that they're feeding. Th these are the things I'm going to ask. So the importance of quality. So we looked at, you know, color, texture, free of mold, free of weeds. These are things that you can do yourself. Ideally, we want a hay test. So if you ask your hay supplier for a hay analysis, that's great. Um, I also realize that most farmers or um, distributors of hay are not going to be able to provide that. So that's the reality is they're not going to be able to provide it. However, you can test the hay yourself. Um, I graduated from Penn State, so I use the Penn State hay probe, which is the one pictured here on the PowerPoint. Um, so you can it attaches to your drill and you want to um, take a large sample. So I try to grab 20 bales if I can. I feel that's a pretty good sample size. Um, you can see it's a long tube. It's very sharp at the end. So what you'll do is you'll drill from the outside in and it cores into the bale. And then you can get a nice sample from outside in um, of each bale and put it in a baggie. If you go to, I send mine to Equa Analytical, which is um, Cornell University in upstate New York. I send it there um, and then they're going to send the test back to me. I generally do a fast track test. And this information is on the Equa, Ana Equa Analytical website. Um, for most people, I'm going to do a fast track test. If you have a horse that has uh, Cushing's, is IR, any kind of metabolic issue, you can add on some more detailed uh, carbohydrate metrics. There's other metrics you can add on also, depending on if you have a special needs horse. The fast track is going to do um, give us the information that most people are going to want to need or want. That's going to give you that information. It's about $20, so it's not super expensive. If you are a Triple Crown customer or potential Triple Crown customer, I will come out and do a hay test. The only thing I ask is that you have enough quantity that's going to last you for a couple weeks to a couple months. If you're getting hay every week and you're getting it from a different supplier, different hay, it's not going to do a whole lot for us. Um, it's going to be hard to balance the diet with varying quality hay. But if you get a you know a tractor trailer load and you have enough for the winter and you'd like to do a hay test, you can reach out to me. I know Kevin um, put my email up there. So feel free to do so. Or if you'd like to buy the hay probe, I'm not sure what that cost me. I can't remember. I want to say it was like less than $100. Again, then you'll have it. And the hay test costs uh, roughly $20. So how to interpret your hay test? So I forgot to put up a slide of one of um, a sample. But again, if you go to the Equa Analytical website, it does have samples of hay tests. So it's going to come back and you're going to look at it and go, what? What am I looking at? I don't understand this. So this is a little bit of a breakdown of what we want to see on a hay test. It's the protein. This is one of the most important factors. Again, your horse is getting uh, the most protein from their hay, in theory, because they're getting um, the bulk of their diet is coming from forage. So a grass hay, I'm looking for 8 to 14 percent protein. I have seen hay come back as little as 4 to 5 percent. And as usual, it comes from someone who tells me, oh, my hay is really, really good quality. I take the test and then the protein comes back super low. Uh, a mixed hay, a legume grass mixed hay is going to be around 14 to 17. And the legume, you know, that's your alfalfa, is going to be uh, 15 to over 20%. Then the uh, acid detergent fiber, we call it ADF, which is the cellulose, lignin, and other poorly digestible components, they comprise the ADF. So this is going to tell you how digestible the nutrients are in your hay. And the lower the value, the more digestible the nutrients. So we're generally looking for values that are going to be under 45% and 
And yes, it is very, very common that my hay test results come back with um, well above 45. It's, it's very common. Um, then we're also going to look at the neutral detergent fiber. So this is a measure of the insoluble fiber. So in theory, you want um, the, the higher the, the NDF, the less likely a horse will eat it. Again, those we, we talk about all the time, horses that just have no interest in their hay. Um, you know, it's interesting to see what the NDF is with these horses that don't eat. I haven't done a whole lot of... Um, Comparing the two, although maybe I should going forward. So under 65% is generally good for horses. Um, if they have values over 65, more than likely your horse is not going to want to eat it. It's not going to be palatable for them. Moisture. P huge problem this year with all the rain that we had. Um, again, mostly during that second cut, but even into the third cut, if third cut actually truly happens. Uh, moisture is a really big problem. The um, optimum horse hay is going to be from 10 to 15 percent moisture. Again, this is going to show up on that fast track uh, analytical. Uh, the fast track with the equi analytical is going to show up here. Um, if it's under 10 percent, it could be very brittle. If it's over 16, again, it's going to have a, a chance of molding um, without a preservative. So there are obviously your local farmers probably not using a pre preservative, but some of the bigger companies out there, uh, they, they may be using one. So if it's over 25%, it's at a risk of heat damage, potential fire damage. So again, this is the that's the hay that you need out of your barn ASAP. Relative feed value. This is more um, something that cattle people use, not so much horse people. Just so, just for your knowledge, uh, 100 is about average. So most equine nutritionists aren't going to use the um, relative feed value to balance a horse's ration. Again, this is more cattle people. Digestible energy. You can use this value to balance the energy part of your horse's diet. Um, this is especially important for those horses in hard work, I feel, or some of those easy keepers too. Uh, horse in light work just generally needs about 20 mcals. Um, most hays are going to be between 0.76 to 1.1 mcals per pound. So I'm going to stop right here. Is there any questions? No, as of right now, there's no questions. We're um, good? Okay. Yep. Yep. Nope. We're still good. But we All definitely right. have. So I forgot to mention it earlier in the video, but we're actually giving away some bags of grain today. Um Melinda was nice enough to have a couple of bags of grain to be raffled off. So if you're watching this right now, all you have to do is like this video and like this video from now until midnight tonight to be entered into win one of three free bags. So with that, Melinda, I'll let you take back over. All right. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit here and just tell you about um, the forage history with Triple Crown. Um so in 2012, we um, started offering more of the chopped forages that you see today. We've added some along, uh, you know, throughout the years, we've added some more products. And so in 2012, we built a brand new facility in Ada, Minnesota. Um, and this was to process hay for our existing uh, chopped forage products, again, with an eye towards future innovations, which um, since then we've released at least two new forage products, which I will go over in a little bit. However, in 2013, we did um, suffer a fire. So it was right after New Year's, there was a fire at the plant and it destroyed the original mill and damaged the new forage plant, unfortunately. Um, so the mill was never replaced, but the forage facility was able to be repaired. And obviously it's up and running now, but um, yeah, that was quite the setback um when that fire happened but it's the nature of processing especially with biological products especially with hay um unfortunately sometimes these things happen despite our best um best you know ways to, to prevent this uh things happen but we're obviously back up and running i don't know if this video is gonna play or nope it's not gonna play well oh maybe Oh, maybe 
video play? All right, I'm gonna let this go. Identifying the best horse feed isn't easy. For over 25 years, we have utilized all of the available university and public research data, along with hands-on horsemanship to develop the Triple Crown line of feeds. It all starts with high quality forage right from the field. We purchase sun-cured alfalfa, timothy hay, and orchard grass from farmers near our manufacturing facility, which is located in northwestern Minnesota. The surrounding area has terrific fertile soil and ideal weather conditions for growing hay. The hay is tested for moisture and inspected for quality when it arrives at our facility, and the bales are stored in a cool, dry environment. Each bale can weigh between 900 and 1,200 pounds each. Our hay is segregated by grower and type to improve our batching accuracy. We first start by removing the baling twine that holds our hay together. The team takes great care to ensure the twine is disposed of properly and fully removed from the hay before chopping and mixing. To chop the hay to the desired stem length, we use an industrial high-speed farm mixer. The mixing process is very important to our quality and consistency. Our bobcat with a telescoping arm allows us to safely operate the mixer, as well as unload trucks and pull hay from our storage area. During the mixing process, we add liquids to some of the products, such as soybean oil, glycerin, flax oil, and molasses. These liquids provide unique nutritional benefits for the horse. The liquids also help us keep dust down and improve the aroma of our products. Our Safe Starch and Alpha Lox products also have a pre-mixed pellet mixed in with the hay so that critical vitamins and minerals can be added. Once the product is fully mixed, it's discharged from the bottom of the mixer where it takes a journey up a conveyor belt to its next safety jack. On its way up the conveyor belt, the chop forage passes underneath our industrial magnet. The magnet is designed to pick out contaminants that might have been harvested in the field. These include iron, nickel, cobalt, and some alloys of rare earth metals. If foreign metal is discovered by the magnet, it's immediately removed from the product and discharged. Now the product is ready for packaging. It flows into the compression chamber where it's pressed from the top and then pushed forward from the side. This process is what gives each 40 pound bale its rectangular shape. You can also see that the bag is being formed and sealed around the product, ensuring a perfect fill. Once the product is packaged, the date code is printed on the side of the bale to allow customers to guarantee freshness. Before being stacked for shipment, the bale enters the x-ray. The x-ray is our final safety inspection and can detect additional contaminants that the magnet cannot. It'll detect all metals, glass, stones, calcified bones, high density plastics, and rubber. If any contaminants are found, our system automatically rejects the bale and will show us where the contaminant is located in the bale. This x-ray technology is one of the first of its kind to be used in producing horse feed, and we believe it'll help preserve the quality of our products and keep them safe for your horse. The product is then stacked onto a pallet, shrink-wrapped, and moved into our warehouse before being loaded onto a truck. We take great care in manufacturing our forage products so that you can be assured your horses can get the nutrition it needs to stay healthy, grow, and perform. Our unparalleled quality and commitment to feeding horses is what makes our products special. Triple Crown will never settle for anything less than offering our customers the absolute best, most nutritionally advanced horse feed on the market. Look for Triple Crown Forages at a dealership near you or call 1-800-451-9916 and ask one of our feeding experts to help you find the product you are looking for. So I thought that video was pretty cool. Um, it is a few years old, but still pertinent. Um, most people don't um, get to hear about the process. And, you know, there's things where they mention, you know, it does the x-ray um, and has the magnets. Yes, this is coming out of a field and things, unfortunately... <laughs> end up in a field because it's a hay field that's not grown in a greenhouse so we do take lots of precautions obviously to try and get any foreign objects out of the hay before we bag it uh but yeah it's, it's grown in a field so that's where 
we get it. Um, we it mentioned we get our hay for our chopped forages come from the Midwest. And uh, they, so we had a lot of rain this year. They had um, very little rain. So it's a bad situation across the US for hay this year. And we only get our hay from certain suppliers that have been approved throughout the years by us. And that's part of the reason why we're not doing more discounts on the forage, because we're also concerned um, about the forage for our products. And I want to just stress that, that no matter if you feed a chopped forage or if you, you know, generally your horses are on pasture until, you know, around here, probably another month or so, uh, just I want you to keep in mind that forage is in a bad situation across the U.S. Um, I know there's it wasn't great in Canada. We're also having difficulties getting products and trucks in from Canada. There's obviously a shortage of drivers. Diesel prices are going high. So I want everyone to just keep this in mind as we're heading into winter to make sure you have secured hay, hopefully the best quality hay you can find. That may be very variable, but just keep that in mind as um, hay prices, I'm sure, are going to continue to rise since there's going to be less supply as well as grain prices are rising. I just want everyone to be aware of that and to take precautions and not be blindsided this winter when, when feed prices are sky high and there's no hay to be found. So if you can take precautions now, try and test the hay if you can. Um, there obviously there's other ways if it's a little bit, um, high on a C and you need a lower on a C where you can soak it. There's some other things you can do, but please just start thinking about that now. I know we're technically still in summer here and it hasn't hit fall. Uh, but, but you, you really need to prepare now. So that being said, I'm going to go into some of our products that we have available. Um, feel free to stop me and ask any questions. I don't want this to be a commercial, but I do want you to know the products that are available as and as we are heading into a hay shortage. Um, obviously, we also have some products for our special needs friends. So that being said, one of our, I'll say there newer. Was, the there, was one, there was one question, actually. Sure. Uh, somebody wants to know what you do with all the failed forage from the x-ray. Yep, it gets discarded. <laughs> It just gets discarded. You, you guys don't just like re try to do it again and nope. try to take out whatever failed. Wow. No. <laughs> so it's very costly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, you can't take, you can't take risks, especially when it comes to um, uh, like mold, for example. Yep. You know, we try and do a visual inspection. Obviously, if it's a thousand pound bale and the mold is in the middle, then uh, yeah, it's, too bad for us. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That was way more like mechanical and futuristic than I ever thought that it was. Um, that's a really cool setup that you guys have. It is cool and it's it's great and it it you know, but it's not it's not without you know the the failures too. We do a lot of precautions, we sell a lot of forage. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not foolproof, but but it makes but it makes customers feel better knowing that you guys are going that above and beyond in the precaution you we know, do. And we, sure. you know over the years we've had to tweak things too um like we had to increase the x-ray we realized there were some things being missed um but there's things like sticks that don't get picked up by the x-ray mm -hmm. so again we try and do visual inspection as much as we can but with those size bales sometimes it's not always possible but yeah we take as many precautions as we can yeah but at the end of the day it's hey you know, it's hey, it's yeah. You know, I try to, you know, I, and obviously we always stand behind my prod, our products. Yeah. So if someone says, "Hey, I found this stick," I'll replace it. Um, but I also try and let them know that uh, it, it's hey, it's, it's yep. you're not in the greenhouse. I've personally seen some crazy stuff in hay bales. Uh, if anybody viewing has seen anything crazy, feel free to comment them. I would love to hear some of the stories of what people have found in hay bales because I'm sure it can get pretty crazy and. Anyone who's just joining us right now, I highly recommend going back a few seconds uh, and watching that video that we just played. It was it was a very informative video, so it'll make you feel good about Triple Crown as a company. So, and that uh, video does live on our website too. Um, 
Uh, I'll, I'll have to post where it's at. It is on the website. I can't remember under which tab it's under right now, but it is there. Oh boy. Someone just commented. Yeah. They found deer legs and deer legs and a bale of hay before. Yeah. yeah. Sadly, sadly that can happen. You know, we, oh. we, um, we found a deer skull before too. Oh geez. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, sadly it, it can happen. Hay is hay, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll let you, I'll let you continue. Just wanted to jump sure. in and ask that one question. No, that's great. And like I said, it, you know, I, I asked people just to be aware, um, despite all of our precautions and we generally don't have a lot of issues, but occasionally there is. So, you know, certainly let us know, we'll make it right. Um, but it is, Hey, <laughs> so that being said, we have our safe starch forage. So this was originally designed for those metabolic horses, your Cushing's, your IR, um, th those type of, of critters. I have a lot of people who now use it for endurance. It's become popular in the endurance world. And I actually see this a ton at horse shows. And I think the reason is it's consistent. Whereas obviously if you're going from horse show to horse show and you're buying your uh, bales of hay at the show itself, it's going to have a lot of variables. So the safe starch is going to be a lot more consistent. It is a 10% protein. It's a 6% fat. So we actually spray some soy oil on this particular product, which is what gives it the 6% fat content. Um, but it is molasses and grain free. And we guarantee that the NSC level is going to be below 10%. I think off the top of my head, I think this one runs around 8.7 is the average, but we do guarantee it to be less than 10%. This also can be a total diet for those special needs horses. It is not a um, cheap diet if you have to go that route, but if you can't find hay that's low enough NSC, if you have a horse with severe allergies, um, it, it's an option. Again, not in not an inexpensive option, but it is an option. Years ago, I had a dressage horse up in uh, near Rhinebeck. I was allergic to everything under the sun. I had some metabolic issues. It lived on safe starch forage and was able to compete. And um, it, it lived a nice, healthy life, but it had to live on safe starch forage. So, but if you do need to go that route, it does have a vitamin mineral mixing pellet in it. So that's our Equimex technology that's in all of the formula feeds. So this can be a total diet for your horse if need be. It can also just be um, a supplement. I'll have people who will feed this potentially with some ration balancer, with some ration balancer and some cubes. We can, we can alter it that way also if you need to be a little bit more uh, cost conscious. Again, safe starts for its usage. It's going to be those horses, again, with the metabolic issues are the ones that really, really need it. Um, again, I already talked about the endurance rides, which is a new one that came to me. wasn't the initial intended purpose, but it certainly does the job. It's also really good for horses that have poor dentition. Um, if they have no teeth, then I find that this product doesn't work. You really need to go and have um, like something like Triple Crown Senior that's being soaked some soaked uh, hay cubes, but if they're kind of in between, the addition is not great, but they still have teeth. This is soft enough and it's chopped fine enough that a lot of those horses will be able to consume it. Our stress-free forage, which is honestly my favorite of the forage products that, that we offer. My particular horse is on this because she's 28 and she lives on Equiox. So she gets a uh, two to three pounds of stress-free forage every day, just because although Equiox is uh, more gentle on the stomach, it is hard on the hindgut. So I give this to her. This is an alfalfa-based supplement. This is not meant to replace hay. This isn't a hay stretcher. This is really um, for specific needs horses. So horses that go off feed, whether it's due to um, ulcers, um, if they're going off feed due to stress, uh, horses that get trailered a lot who are going to shows, if you have to put them on view or doxy, those type of things, anything that's going to cause digestive upset, I 
no pun intended, I stress that they go on this product, even if it's short term. I, um, if I can catch you in time, if you know your horse is going to be going on, again, bu doxy, anything that's going to be somewhat harsh, start feeding this with the, with the medication and they're more likely to stay on whatever feed they're on, continue to eat their hay. I tell people if you're going to be shipping to Florida or shipping wherever, uh, start feeding this to your horse a week or two prior to them leaving. Keep them on this product during the ride and then for a week or two after. And then it's up to you if you want to continue on it or go off of it. But it'll help the horses uh, continue eating. It's a 14% protein, again, because it's, it's alfalfa based. It's 7% fat. Um, the NSC runs around 9.2. So even if you have a, a show horse that also happens to be, you know, IR, this is generally going to be safe, especially at the two to four pound per day feeding rate. Um, it's going to be safe for, for most horses. Love this product. Um, it has, again, it has the moss in it. It's going to have omega-3 fatty acids, the L-carnitine, which is the thing that increases the metabolism and improves cellular repair. So it's just a really great product. Um, I just, I really can't speak highly enough about it. Uh, I've also had horses that have diarrhea. This has helped with that. Again, it depends on the reason why they have the diarrhea, but I have seen this um, really, really help with those horses. Again, I kind of already touched on this, but it's going to maintain appetite. It's going to improve feed consumption no matter what feed they're on. And it's not medicated. So you really should work with your vet if you, you know, suspect that your horse has ulcers or you definitely know the horse has ulcers, do your dosage of ulcer guard or gastro guard. You can feed this alongside, and then this is going to be continued maintenance for those type of horses, especially if the thing that you believe is causing the ulcers can't go away, such as shows, trailering, they hate their neighbor, they hate their pasture mate, maybe they hate their owner, I don't know. Um, but if the thing that's causing them stress is not going away, then treat the ulcers and continue them on this product. Um, in 2018, we added something called Butapearl. So, and again, those who may be confused, stress-free forage used to be called Alphalox. We changed the name and we changed the packaging. We did not change the formula. There was no formula change from Alphalox to stress-free. But prior to it becoming stress-free, we added something called Butapearl. It's made by a company called Kemen. And it, it's called Butapearl because it literally looks like little pearls. You may see them in the product, but probably not. Um, I, occasionally, I'll see some in my uh, stress-free forage that I buy. But it's butyric acid and zinc, and it's uh, mixed with spearmint. So you, oftentimes, people open a bag, and they can't quite pinpoint what the smell is, but it's spearmint. Um, and that's what makes this product extra special. I do have to say, so butyperol is in the stress-free forage in a higher inclusion rate than any of the other products. But we do utilize butapearl in all of our formula feeds. So it's in all of our feeds, but it's in a higher inclusion rate in the stress-free forage. This is probably a little bit hard to read, but this just talks about why we've decided to use the butapearl and what butyric acid and zinc does um, for the GI tract. If you want this, feel free to email me and I can send this in a you know a PDF where you can actually probably read it better. Um, and again, this goes along with, with leaky gut and we know that leaky gut is caused by pathogens, medications, stress, that sort of thing, which causes leaky gut. I'm not going to go into leaky gut because that's not the topic for today. And that's a topic all on its own, but just to bring your attention to why we're using the butapearl and that it is in a very high inclusion rate in the stress-free forage. Then we have our alfalfa forage blend. So this is going to be a product that's more so going to be um, like a hay stretcher, a hay supplement. It's a 15% protein, 2.5% fat, 30% fiber. It's a mix of alfalfa, timothy, and orchard grass. So that's why it's called alfalfa blend. Um, so this is going to be a product that you may be looking at coming into winter. We also have our grass forage, which I would say is probably the most popular. I think I sell the most of this. It's a, just timothy and orchard grass. So obviously no alfalfa is included in the grass forage. 
Again, it's going to be chopped uh, fairly fine, has a nice color to it. It's great quality, um, good for horses with allergies. Again, in drought conditions or in situations like we have, which was the opposite of drought this year, where we're, we're coming across either we didn't cut enough hay or, again, the mold issue, this is going to be a consistent product that you can use. Uh, it could replace your entire uh, long-stemmed hay. Again, from a financial standpoint, that's probably not ideal. Uh, but if you can use it to supplement, that um, is a great option. We also have our cubes. Now, we talked about, um, I showed you the forage plant, which is in Ada, Minnesota. Our cubes are actually manufactured by Ontario Day High, and they've manufactured them for quite a long time. So they're manufactured in a different facility. But we have our alfalfa timothy cubes. Again, great supplement. These are great for older horses. If you need to hydrate your horses, whether they're traveling, they're just not great drinkers, this is a solid option. I do have to say, um, our cubes soak really well and break apart really well. Five to 10 minutes. If you're using warm water, it's going to be on the quicker end. If you're using cold water, you're probably going to be towards the 10 minutes. But they do break apart quickly, which uh, is really great. If you're like me and have a million things going on and you need to hurry about your day and not leave uh, cubes sitting all day, these do break apart uh, very quickly, which I find is a nice attribute of these cubes. We also have our straight alfalfa cubes. These are 15% protein, 1.5% fat, 30% fiber. Again, great to supplement. Um, maybe if you do have a horse with ulcers, but you can't afford the stress-free these could be a, a viable alternative. It's not going to have all the digestive enzymes and the benefits of the stress-free, but alfalfa on its own being higher in calcium can certainly be helpful for these horses with ulcers. Then we have the Timothy Balance Cubes. These, um, this was helped uh, formulated by Dr. Eleanor Kellen, which if you are in the, if you're one of those people who have the IRA horses, the Cushing's horses, you're going to be familiar with Dr. Kellen. These are a 9% protein, 1.5% fat, 35% fiber. They're actually Timothy, beet pulp, and minerals. So it's a very unique product. These are great, really great for horses with Cushing's IR. Um, a laminitic, they foundered. Again, they soak pretty well. And it, if they have to be, this could be a total diet. I generally add our ration balancer in if they're going to be basically living off these cubes. I do add in the ration balancer just to complement the diet. Again, it was a bad hay year. Um, don't let your horses lose weight. So often I have people come to me and say, um, you know, my horse is losing weight. Something changed with the feed. We have fixed formulas, so there's nothing changing with the feed. So you really need to look elsewhere unless your horse isn't finishing their feed. Generally, it's going to be a forage issue. So if you're getting poor quality hay, there's less calories per pound or your horse isn't finishing it, that's going to really contribute to their top line, their overall um, their overall weight, um, again, ulcers. So forage is just so important and good quality forage is important. Again, there's certain scenarios where we may want a little bit of a lower quality forage, depending on the situation, but that's going to be something we're going to talk about with your individual horse and probably involve your vet. Um, so I can't stress enough getting plenty of forage for your horses, testing your hay if possible, finding good quality hay um, and, and doing it now. So again, we, if you're using one of our forages or you're using one of our feeds, especially if you have one of the special needs horses, we do list the water soluble carbohydrates, the ethanol soluble car carbohydrates, starch, starch plus ESC and the NSC. This um, obviously feel free to save. It also lives on our website as well as I could email this out uh, if you'd like your own PDF of it. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention because this is obviously a lot of people are looking at carbohydrates and I can't emphasize enough that you need to look at carbohydrates, not just from feed, but from feed and forage combined, which again, carbohydrates, different talk also, but again, it's something I want to just draw your attention to 
if that's something or a reason why you're feeding our forages, look at your forage, look at your you know long stemmed hay and look at your feed and we need to combine that. I have access to a carbohydrate calculator. So if you know the NSC of your hay, um, if you're feeding a triple crown feed, obviously I'm gonna have access to that information and I can calculate the carbohydrates if that's something you need. Again, feel free to email me and I can run that through our calculator. We can get the carbohydrates for the total diet for your horse if you have a hay analysis. So this is my favorite little thing. You know, horse walks into the bar. The bartender says, hey, and the horse says, you read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> a little hay humor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that kind of wraps up what I wanted to go over. So let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, so there was one question. Uh, a viewer said that they feed 25 to 30 pounds of alfalfa a day, and they want to know what they should do in case of an emergency without breaking the bank. Yeah, good question. So obviously it's tough because we don't know your horse, but right. I'm sure you can give like a general idea of what they could do in an emergency. So I guess it depends on what the emergency is. And yes, obviously your individual horse, if you can supplement cubes are generally the least expensive of all of them. Um, so if you don't mind soaking, technically can cubes be fed dry? They can. I don't recommend it myself. I try to cover my own butt from a liability standpoint. I um, suggest that they are soaked. However, I have standard bred customers who do feed it dry. Um, so that's one option. You could also go with a, a feed that has uh, more alfalfa meal in it, something that's more alfalfa based. That could be an option. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a tough one because alfalfa, you know, if you're feeding that much of it, yeah, the cubes are really kind of the only way. And I'd have to do a cost analysis to really see if that would actually save you money or not. It depends on what you're paying per bale and what obviously the stores are charging for the cubes. And we'd have to go through and do a cost analysis, which I could help you with. Um, obviously, if you know what you're paying per ton for the alfalfa, I know what your store would be charging for the cubes. I could also obviously add in the chopped the chopped alfalfa blend and go through that way, but we'd really have to sit down and do a cost analysis. Perfect, yeah, and I just put your email up on the screen too. So if you wanna you know, email Melinda, you totally can, and she can help you out with that. Um, and it wasn't a question, but Jennifer just wanted to make sure you know that she did not find the deer legs in the triple crown product. Okay. It, was, it was in a regular bale of hay. So she just wanted to make sure you knew that. I did panic when she first said that. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> no, the deer legs were in a regular bale of hay. So, and if anyone else has anything, you know, that you want to tell us that you found in a bale of hay, I'd be interested in knowing, because I know there's a lot of weird things like we've, we found snake skins in them before. We found gloves. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you can find in hay. So um, this is a little morbid, and it was years ago. But we actually we found a a cat in a bale oh, once. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, when they're out in the field, like we said, hay is hay. So yeah, I'm sure it was out <laughs> mousing and got caught up, unfortunately. But oh, yeah. Boy. I would also like to clarify, neither the cat nor the deer skull were in triple crown forage either. They were in regular <laughs> bales of hay. Regular bales of hay. Yeah. No, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. Uh, is there anything you want to add before we get into our big deal for tonight? I don't think so. Like I said, I just, I really want to emphasize that this is coming from a fellow horse owner as yep. well as someone in the industry. Um that now is the time to really be preparing for this winter. I'm sure you hear that a lot, but there is a real issue with hay, a hay shortage and hay quality this year. So if you can solidify, um, even if it costs more now, it's gonna cost more later. So it, the prices are not gonna go down with hay. We'll see what happens with feed. I know there's, um, we're having a price increase in another week here and we're not alone. So it's just, you know, there's many things that have gone into why feed prices are rising. And I don't know if you guys are going to touch on that or not. Yeah. I've, uh, I've posted, I've posted about that a lot actually. Um, 
just why the feed prices have been going up. So um, our viewers are already informed on, you know, what's happening in excellent happening in the world out there. So just yeah, like it's, it's every company, we're all we're all in the same boat here. Yep. Yep. It is. It is everybody. It's, you know, it's industry wide. So uh, no, it doesn't look like there's any other questions. So with that, we will, I'm just going to bring up my screen here. Let me see. Perfect. There we go. So Melinda was nice enough to run a dollar off all the bags of grain uh, just for this week only. You can do it on basedaypet.com, and it's only for the grains. As we talked about, you cannot do it for the hay, the, for the forage. Um, just because we are nervous about it, you, the dollar off will not be on the forage. It is on all the grains, though, just for this week. So yeah, I would have loved Friday. to, but we, we all have to take precautions. But we do have some beet pulp-based feeds, so... <laughs> Perfect. And with that, I think we're I think set. Well, thank you, Melinda. I really appreciate you uh, going over with us and uh, being prepared for what could be a really tough one. You know? So now is the time to get prepared for it. Yeah, I'm glad that you're bringing this to all your customers' attention. You're really doing a, a huge service for them. Awesome. Well, thank you, Melinda. I hope I can have you on a, a future Bay State talk. We'll have to uh, get you on. Yeah, we'll have to get you on another one. Well, thank you awesome. again, and thank you all for tuning in. Well, as always, thank you, everyone. Uh, this is Kevin, and for I think that's it for tonight. We do have another one planned for Thursday, but tomorrow I'm going to do a small video where we're going to um, pick the winners for both the Blue Seal raffle yesterday and the triple crown raffle today so you still have time to enter all you have to do is like this video to enter uh, up until midnight tonight so with that i leave you guys for the rest of your night have a good one